When you're looking at this season, Mac, you know, there's been some things that have obviously changed since you've come back into coaching. One of them, you know, this early signing day, you're preparing for a bowl game. You're trying to, you know, lock up recruits. How has that dynamic changed for you? And are you a fan of it? Is it more difficult? You know, what what are the pros and cons that you've seen? When we started, I, I was on the American Football Coaches Association board when we we proposed this. And guys, what we wanted is for legacy kids that wanted to go to that school and wouldn't take any other visits to have a signing date early and also the early enrollees. That's all we wanted because we thought that would be fine to get those kids to to go ahead and have a signing date and get it out of the way because they they know what they're doing. They know where they're going. And and then the NCAA said, we can't just have some sign. Everybody's got to sign. And now you really just have one signing date, and the second signing date is for a few guys that maybe they just weren't ready to sign or or, or maybe they didn't think they were highly enough recruited and they want to wait a little bit longer. But um, all of our signees are probably done in in the first one. Uh, So I like the fact that uh, it happens early. But for a new coach, it's a disaster because he doesn't have enough time to understand what's going on. And then secondly – uh, when you start looking at, at uh, disrupting the playoffs for high schools, I don't like that part. Um, I don't mind the official visits being in spring now, but Bobby, it's so much different when when you were coming up and, and um, you waited till January and February to do your recruiting. A lot of it's done now in, in uh, March and April and May. Uh, so I would rather have a signing date in June for those that want to get it done. Uh, and then have one in December, and then have one in February. And I think everybody just signs when they want to. Talking to Mac Brown with us, North Carolina's head football coach, getting ready for their military tilt against the Temple Owls. And, and, and Coach, another big-picture item there, as you mentioned, coming back into college football, you sat in the same chairs that we did for a while here and looked at the landscape change when the playoff started. How do you assess what the college football playoff has done for the sport so far, and where do you think it ends up going? I think the college football playoff has been great, but I think it's hurt some of the other bowls. We don't talk about the other bowls enough anymore, and and that bothers me some. Unless you're in one of the the games at the end, uh, or now a 10-2 and team has had a bad year, so I don't like that. I think we've got to be careful. Secondly, I would like for the group of five to have their own national championship team. We talk so much about who's the highest rated group of five. The way the schedules are set, we're never going to have a group of five team in the playoff in my estimation because we don't, we don't give them that opportunity by schedule because of their leagues. And then what I would do is I would expand our playoff uh, to, to six teams so every conference champion would be in and then one at large and then probably cut out those games with the uh, the the uh, FCS schools that that people just have in there that I'm not sure are safe even for the other teams and and give money we're making enough money give money to all the schools that are having to play those games uh, a Western Carolina is such having to play Alabama the week before the Auburn game let's give money to the FCS schools and 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 the the group of five schools but let's not uh, continue to play those games. Coach Mac Brown with us on the Shell Penzo performance line. Coach, before we let you go, I'd be remiss. Listen, one of my favorite parts of this college football season has been seeing you post up and dance in the post-game locker rooms after some of these wins. So should things go well for you, can we expect to see more dance moves from you after this one? Absolutely. Since the players started this stupid tradition of me dancing, <laughs> I'd like for it to be uh, coming to an end on Friday, <laughs> even if we win. Very quickly, what we did is all the guys were telling their stories in preseason. Here's where I grew up. Here's what happened. Here's the best thing in my life. Here's the worst thing in my life. And some of the things were really tough. So I got Dre Bly, our, our young uh, secondary coach, defensive back coach, Hall of Famer, to start a dance contest before every team meeting. And I thought that was really smart. It's one of the dumbest things I've done all year because they all told their story. I told my story. They all danced, and then at the end of, of preseason, they said, okay, you got to dance. And I said, I don't dance. And they said, no, man, all in, all inclusive. You said everybody, so you got to dance. And I said, okay, you beat South Carolina, I'll dance. I didn't think we are going to beat South Carolina. <laughs> I'm walking into the dressing room after the game. I'm so excited for those kids, and I'm so pumped 
And then my, my wife says, you know, they're going to have you dance. I said, no, 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 that's two weeks ago. They've forgotten, man. So I walk in, ESPN's there, and they're going, dance, dance, dance. So 68-year-old guy coming off of a knee replacement with no music. It, I had excuses. I had them built in all over the place. And my wife said, that's the worst thing I have ever seen in my life. Don't ever do that again. Well, next week we beat Miami. I didn't think about it. They said, dance, dance. So I'm actually trying to work on it now. So we'll, we'll be a little less embarrassing at the end of the year. But I'm trying to pass the torch to the assistant coaches for next year. Uh, Coach, I think I speak for all of us on the outside when we say we hope that torch doesn't get passed anytime soon. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.